I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today I want to talk a little bit about the impression that people like to give when they're complaining about the heat here in Nicaragua. Look, I know it, it is hot. We're one of the hottest countries in the Western hemisphere, outside of little tiny islands where you can get incredibly high temperatures that are isolated because of how small the country is for a country of any sizable land mass. We're about as warm as it's going to get. So yeah, we're warm. But it's often misleading the way that people describe it, and I think it's important to put some context and limits on exactly how hot Nicaragua is, because you need to be realistic about it, and I think once you understand why the temperatures are like they are, that it'll make visiting a little bit more uh, easy for you because you'll be able to make better decisions and also be a little bit more realistic about what to expect. We're going to get to that right up to the bottom. You get a completely different angle on the camera with me today because I'm actually recording in the morning. Normally I record in the afternoon. I'm working really hard to get caught up after I've been gone for some time. And if you're watching this today, my hope, my hope is that we're going to do a live video today. This is for Thursday. It is on my schedule to do a live stream, but I do have me, uh, uh, not meetings today, but I have scheduled events that I need to do for the city, and that's going to take some time. I'm hoping that it's not going to be too much, and that we can do a live stream, but the live stream will be later today. If everything goes well, I'm shooting for around 7. I need to be downtown at 4, if at all possible. I've got to figure out how to get there. i got to figure out my cameras. i got a lot going on today beyond normal work, but there are some events going on that I'd like to get recorded, that the city would like me to record, so I'm going to try to do that as well. So, But I do want to do a live stream because we missed it last week because of work, so fingers crossed crossed we can do that tonight just look for the announcements and and if not i'm sorry that we don't get to it but i'm gonna try to do it all right all right so i had some comments and i always get these right this is yeah today i got one and it gave me a topic but i do get these on a regular basis of people complaining about how hot it is here in nicaragua and yes we're hot right let's be straight up we're in the tropics if you come here and you're expecting it to be cold you you really you're just lost right now Let's, there is a little bit of reason why you might expect it to not be so warm, and that is that when you live in like the United States and Canada, and you watch movies mostly about like places like Mexico, they really give you the impression that it's going to be very hot. And of course, if you go into the Sonoran Desert, you go into the Chihuahua Desert, yeah, there's some spots where it is pretty hot, for sure. But if you're going into the bulk of Mexico, especially the Mexico where people live, it's incredibly mild. In fact, it's beautiful, and you need to wear jeans and a jacket much of the time. In most of populated Mexico. And so there's the concept of how hot can Mexico get, and there's the concept of how hot is Mexico for Mexicans. When you come to Guatemala, for example, it's actually colder than Mexico. El Salvador and Honduras are decently mild, definitely warmer than Guatemala and Mexico. And when you come to Nicaragua, suddenly it's very warm. But if you're just looking at a map and you're looking at where Nicaragua lies in the tropics, you should be expecting it to be very hot. It's only that the, those other countries put most of their population up in the mountains and Nicaragua does not, that changes the temperatures. And then in Costa Rica, people go up in the mountains again. They tend to be a little bit cooler, and in Panama, they're back at sea level once again and hot again. So Nicaragua and Panama are very warm compared to all the surrounding countries. Now, when we're talking about temperatures, it's very important to understand what we mean, because uh, first, a lot of people talk in Celsius or Fahrenheit. There's humidity to take into effect, wind, and all kinds of things. But we have a number of challenges when we talk about places and how hot they are. When we talk about Nicaragua, we can with some degree of safety, make big generalizations like it's hot because it is. And your ability to escape that heat is pretty minimal. If you do go to places like Hinotega, you are going to get to temperatures that are dramatically cooler than the rest of the country. But those are very isolated locations. They are a little bit difficult to get to, at least time consuming. They don't have giant populations and they don't represent Nicaragua on any large statistical basis. But they do exist and it's important to know that there are places that are not as cool as Guatemala, but are much cooler than most of Nicaragua. And if you need to go there, those options generally exist. But those places do get warm too. There are days where nowhere is cool here. But when we're talking about most countries, and especially large ones, take the U.S. or Canada, making big generalizations about the weather aren't possible. 
the idea that you could say the United States isn't hot is a ridiculous statement. The United States is, by some measurements, the hottest country in the world, if you're measuring by peaks. Death Valley is the world's hottest location, and every year, or nearly every year, it sets the record for that year as the hottest place. Now, maybe not every year, but pretty often. So if we were to cherry pick a location and go by its peak numbers only, Death Valley looks like a record-breaking location, making the U.S. as a country the hottest place ever. But someone who lives in northern Maine would laugh at you because that's a ridiculous way to generalize a country. The United States, on average, is not a super hot country. It's, if anything, kind of a chilly country by most standards. But, of course, in with the U.S., you have to include Hawaii and Guam and southern Florida and southern Texas and the Arizona desert. But those things also have problems because, yes, things like deserts are hot in the day but generally cold at night, whereas the Appalachian Forest is going to be very even and its daytime temperature and its nighttime temperature won't be that far apart. So there's just no way to generalize over a large area about climate because it doesn't work that way. Your climates are unique within small areas. Now, it's common when people are coming to Nicaragua for some reason, I guess because it's just a little bit smaller, that people start generalizing and acting like one temperature experience represents the entire country. Now, if you were to do that, you'd have to look for something that really fits kind of a mean and median number, and that still would be a terrible way to generalize the country. But you would need to do something, and that, I think, is best represented by Managua, which is the largest center of population. It is in the center of the populated portion of the country and has kind of a middle-of-the-road climatic experience for the country. So if you were to wonder what the national average is, Managua has got to be really close to it. And if you're looking for the statistical mean of what it's like to live here as a Nicaraguan, it's almost certainly going to be what is experienced in Managua. And if you do look at Managua, what you find is that it is a warm country, absolutely, but you're almost never hitting those extreme highs of the high 90s, essentially never hitting 100. You're rarely getting into the 90s at all. It has a, has a tendency to vary within the 80s. It will go into the 90s, absolutely. It's not unheard of. And for a few weeks of the year, you're going to definitely expect it to be in the 90s. But most of your year is going to be in the 80s as a high. This is the peak for the day with your lows at night almost always being in the low 70s. It can hit the 60s, but it's extreme. Uh, so you have this really mild uh, portion of the country where the extreme swings in an individual day and throughout the year don't exist. Uh, and the temperatures are warm but very, very doable. And there's a reason why so many people, the majority of people who live in Managua don't have air conditioning because of the lack of swings and because it is relatively mild compared to out here in Nicaragua Occidental, that it really is viable to live without an air conditioner. Of course, if I lived there, I would want an air conditioner, right? Air conditioners are great for taking some of the humidity out of the air. Uh, air conditioners are great for those super hot days when you just, you don't want to have to adapt to that. You can, you can trim off the hottest days. And of course, they filter the air and allow you to use electronics under conditions where they might overheat or get dusty otherwise. So AC does play a role. And in you, if you live in Managua, I understand why you would want air conditioning. But lots and lots of people opt not to pay for it. It's just not worth it. Now, of course, lower incomes always struggle with paying for luxuries like air conditioning, so that's a factor, obviously. But people in Managua are not dying because they don't have air conditioning. It's not like that. It is absolutely acceptable temperatures. So when we're looking at that, and it's also important to note, the humidity in populated Nicaragua is not generally very high. Out here in Occidental, which is the hottest part of the country, our humidity is generally in the 50s and 60s. That's relatively mild. We are just a little bit drier than Dallas, Texas, so we're not that bad. So when we get our feels-like temperatures, they're generally right on with the actual temperature. They vary by very little. Whereas if you lived in, say, Louisiana, your feels like is often much higher than the actual temperature because of the high humidity. The swampy areas feel much warmer than, uh, than the, the raw number actually uh, indicates. What that means is humans uh, sense it. It's harder for a human to cool down, but a computer will not notice the difference because computers don't cool by sweating. It's animals that cool by evaporation. That Those are the ones that are affected by that feels like. So that's where that number comes from in case someone uh, didn't know. So when we're looking at Nicaragua as a whole, it's really not that hot. But a lot of tourists and a lot of people who are looking at moving to Nicaragua look and see areas that are along the coast and say, well, I want to be along the coast for whatever reason. It just 
seems like where you'd want to be because you're coming from places that are coastal populations. So you think coastal is what you want. Uh, you've looked at it and you want to be on a beach. You see cities that are in the West and they seem really interesting, maybe because you watch my channel. And so you opt to move to an area of the country that is the absolute hottest. Well, yeah, you're going to skew those numbers up. But even out here, with Leon and Shenandega, the hottest areas of population in the country, we're not that hot. We're, we're basically never hitting 100 degrees. That is extremely rare. Uh, and we do only have high 90s for certain portions of the year. Our humidity is not very high. And, uh, and again, our variance throughout the year is very low, so you adapt to it. So I'm out here outside recording on a beautiful day. It's probably about 82, 83 degrees. It feels great. It looks great. There's absolutely no reason not to be outside. You could go out for a walk. You can do all kinds of things. It is incredibly comfortable even if you're coming from cold places. And remember, if you're coming from a place that is cold directly to Nicaragua, because we're the same temperature year round, you're going to experience a giant jump in temperature, just like you went from winter to summer all at once. So a lot of people come here because it's warm when it's cold where they are, and that makes them experience the heat in completely unnatural ways. And then they react to it as if it's much hotter than it actually is. But if you, for example, lived in most of the US during the peak of summer, when you're hitting 90s, 100 degrees, I'm from New York. We hit 100 degrees regularly, not all the time, but with more frequency than we do here in Nicaragua, and populated Nicaragua at least, and being in the 90s, I remember as a child being in the high 90s, being absolutely unbearable, could not adapt to it, but it would only last for so many weeks, and then it would go into beautiful temperatures, and it would suddenly be snowing, and it would be so cold and so hot, and it was terrible. Those temperatures that I experienced there are the same as we experience here. So if you're coming from those hottest days in the north of the U.S., let alone the hottest days in the south of the U.S., and coming to Nicaragua, you're, you're going to go, wow, this is, this is very mild, like super mild. This is fantastic. But if you're coming from the United States, most of the United States, in winter when it's at its cold, maybe you're coming from snow, maybe just chilly days, you're coming from drizzling rain and it's 40 degrees, and you come down to Nicaragua and suddenly it's those peak summer days again, you're gonna be like, this is insane. I can't take how hot it is because your body is not in any way adjusted and you're not doing a comparison to the hot times. Uh, and so there's, that perspective makes a huge, huge difference. Now I wanna address something that was said specifically on the show, which was Nicaragua is just oppressively hot. It's 100 degrees every day and 70% humidity. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. That's not even close to what Nicaragua is like. So we dug into his numbers and he said, you must be crazy because then he said where he was. So this is really, this is what we call cherry picking. If you've never seen cherry picking, look up logical fallacy cherry picking. It's important to know logical fallacies. They're really useful. It's actually, if you've never done this, learn your logical fallacies. You don't have to memorize them, but look through the list and get used to. These are things that philosophers and logisticians and just thinkers over the centuries have put together as standard mechanisms that tend to be used to fool people or fool ourselves or to misunderstand the world because we're using logic that doesn't work but our brain these are ones that our brains have a tendency to fall for and cherry picking is taking isolated data in this case incorrect isolated data and using it to extrapolate something large from something small when we've intentionally looked for something that is not the norm so the person in question said that it was 100 degrees every day Right, and that it was 70% humidity every day and oppressive heat. So there's a number of things wrong with this. First, the place that they are is Rancho Santana. This is not an area of population. That is not the name of a village. That is the name of a resort. It is an isolated resort not too far from the city or town of Tola Rivas. So this is a coastal city. So first of all, they're on the coast. There's no center of population except for San Juan del Sur on the coast of Nicaragua. So this is a isolated expat resort area. Beautiful spot and in no way saying anything negative about Rancho Santana. This is this is great that Nicaragua has this to offer. This is where you can go. Uh, I don't know if they do all-inclusive. Someone has told me they think they do, but it's it's like high-end resort uh, on, on the coast. Um, so basically everyone who's there and it's designed around expats. So this is like Americans and Canadians who are vacationing at very high cost who want to experience Nicaragua without experiencing Nicaragua, right? Come to Rancho Santana. It's very famous for this. Everyone in the country knows it. So Rancho Rancho Santana sits on the coast and has its own weather that is not really part of Nicaragua proper. Now you're going to say, Scott, that's unfair. It's still part of Nicaragua like anywhere else. What makes Managua more important than Rancho Santana? Well, 
a couple things. One, Managua is part of a large climatic zone and represents a large percentage of the country climatically or very close to it. Rancho Santana is a microcosm because of where it sits, so its weather may not be indicative of even just one or two beaches away, and it affects a population of essentially zero Nicaraguans. It's it's really close to zero people. Uh, of those that affect, it's all people who have specifically chosen to be in whatever climatic situation or, or combination of things that it has. This is a super isolated enclave, and yes, it could skew way off. So it doesn't represent the landmass or the population of Nicaragua. And when we talk about Nicaragua, we mean traditional Nicaragua. There is a region known traditionally on maps for a long time as Nicaragua, and then there are autonomous zones that are administered by it today. And yes, yeah, sometimes we include the entire country landmass, and sometimes we don't. Now, Rancho Santana falls into that original Nicaragua, so that does not excuse it in any way. It's just important to note that when we're talking about Nicaragua, that is what we mean, and that's where Nicaraguans live. So that zone is fairly represented by the climates that we've talked about. So Rancho Santana is this incredibly isolated spot. We're not even talking about a city. You're not saying, well, the average temperature in this town for the day. You're saying on this specific patio, it hit these temperatures. Now, when we look at the temperatures for, and he said all week we're at 100 degrees, but what he said is it's always 100 degrees, like year round. So when I looked for this week, this is really important, the peak for the week is 93. Now when you're talking about 93 to 100, that isn't a close number. That is really far away. Seven degrees, I realize sounds, well that's kind of, but when you're talking about those peak numbers, the difference between a day that peaks at 93, which even in New York is pretty comfortable, and a day that peaks at 100, which pretty much nowhere is comfortable, is very, very different. And it means all the temperatures that aren't the peak come down with that as well. So that is the peak for the week, not for the day. The peak for today is 92 degrees, which again, not a big difference, but that brings the whole day down. But it's important to understand, this is the peak. This is not the average. When you say it's 100 degrees, that's the average you're talking about. That means you have to be 110, 115 during the day and only coming down to 85, 90 at night, basically as a swing to end up with an average at 100. That is not what you're experiencing here in Nicaragua. What you're experiencing in Rancho Santana this week is a couple days, it is going to just touch for one hour in the afternoon, 93 degrees in the shade. Now, if you go out measuring the sun, you can get anything you want, right? You can, you can hit 180, but it's not actually 180. That's not, that's not how you measure the temperatures. So when you're actually measuring the temperatures from a temperature, from a, from a temperature, from a weather authority, they're, they're listing the peak at 93 out there in Tola. So with that at 93, you have to also look that the nighttime temperatures are about 76 to 77. And basically they track. If it's a 92 day, it goes down to 76. If it's a 93 day, it goes down to 77. So that is all week you have these nights where you can easily sleep, even if you're from northern the US, even if you're from Canada, sleeping at 76 degrees with the windows open is very doable. So when you say it's 100 degrees all the time, that gives people the impression that it, you're just sweltering and it's impossible to do anything and the peaks must be completely unbearable and you can't go outside and you can't do all these things and at night you've got to run air conditioning like so strong all the time or you'll die. That is what that would imply. But the reality is, is that the day is 93. At 93, I go out for walks and don't even think twice about it. That's not even a hot peak, like whatever. That's so, yeah, it's a warm day. Yeah, you're gonna sweat. Is it oppressive? No, you can't call 93 oppressive. 93 is 100 humidity. Yeah, the humidity can make anything oppressive, right? 75 and 100% humidity is oppressive for some people like me. But at 93, that's a completely decent temperature. That's a nice day on the beach. That's a nice day for going out for a walk. Bicyclists, when I grew up in New York as an as a, uh, athlete, we wanted days above 95 because it's when your muscles really started to relax. You felt better. Now the sun could be a problem, but the temperature itself was great for outdoor athletics. So, so 93 as a peak for just a few days during the week, really not a big deal. And so you have to look at that average for the day. And the average for the day is in the 80s. And what most people do in the tropics is they take the afternoons to relax. They aren't exactly siesta. You, so, you certainly can. And if you're on vacation, I'd recommend that. If you're in Rancho Santana, take that middle of the day where it's super hot. Go in your room and enjoy the air conditioning. Take a nap. Be charged up for the rest of the day. These are warm temperatures. They wear you down a little bit more. So save up that energy because that's why Nicaraguans do their stuff at night. So it's not even a good indicator of what life is like in Nicaragua because Nicaraguans generally don't do a whole lot in the middle of the afternoon, but they do stay up super late at night and take advantage of those 70 degree temperatures, high 70s of course, at night. 
that is when they live their lives for a reason because it's just average hot so society has adjusted for that if you're trying to act like an american it's going to seem hotter and it's fine if that's what you want to do but be aware you're creating a hotter situation than nicaraguans experience themselves on average so that's an average right that's an average for this week but that's misleading because this week is the hottest week of the year or maybe last week is the last this is the hottest month of the year and we're in the middle of the month and we're so we're at the peak for temperature so extrapolating a temperature that isn't even real for this week you know bumping it up seven degrees imagine anywhere on earth bumping it up in seven degrees when people are talking about climate change the world over we're talking about like three to four degrees i know they say one to two but that's celsius you're talking about three to four degrees global change they're talking about the end of the world right they're talking about like complete devastation so when you're talking about raising a place by seven degrees it's noticeable right you can agree or not agree with climate change or the causes of climate change but you can't disagree that seven degrees warmer is something you're going to feel you go from one room that's 80 in another room that's 87 you're instantly going to go that room is warmer <laughs> like it's so different so that that padding of seven degrees is really significant and using the peak instead of the average but presenting it as the average is really significant as well but everyone does this right now there are terminology and we say this all the time today we're going to hit 95 right we say this and often when you see me out i generally film not right now but generally i film at the peaks i'm out at the two to three to four o'clock range three o'clock is generally the peak here in nicaragua and that's what i'm filming so if we're hitting 95 i mean we're actually at 95 as i'm recording the video right so when you guys see me that's what you're seeing and people are like how are you not dying out there it's because that's not that hot when the humidity is not that bad so that's the first thing. Now we're talking about the peak of the year. So taking, a, a, even if we took real numbers and said it's 93, it's 93 this week for the entire year, it's going to go down several degrees from April. Now we say that it doesn't vary that much throughout the year. April, we always point out is the, high, I can't tell you how many episodes have we done recently where we said, don't come in April. April's the one month of the year we say it's too hot. I even have an entire episode dedicated to telling people not to come in April. So if you're here in April, it feels like you're kind of cherry picking the time of the year to come up with the one time and not just April, but the peak of April to come up with a way to say that it's hot. And so if you were to actually look at the averages for any place in the country, it's several degrees cooler than it is in April. So if it's 92 is kind of the general peak for the hottest portion, uh, we expect that Tola would be in the high 80s as a year long high, not the average, the average high for the year. Normal days in Tola are in the low 80s as an average. You put in a little bit of effort in the afternoon to, to nap, you may never see temperatures above like 86 degrees. Suddenly these numbers start sounding really pleasant, don't they? It's all about framing a little bit. It's easy to come up with numbers, pad a little bit, cherry pick a little bit, and make it sound like the country is outrageously warm. And don't get me wrong, it is a warm country, but it is reasonably warm in a way that you really have to mess up to end up in a scenario where you're so hot that you can't take it. Unless the weather really does something crazy, and it can. And I've been here when I came from somewhere cold, and it's like, wow, I just, I'm so warm all the time. But it's because I came from somewhere cold, not because Nicaragua was that warm. I remember specifically being here in 2019. I had been in cold for so long that 84 degrees felt terrible. Now an 84 degree day, because I'm used to it, is extremely pleasant. You give me an 84 degree day, I'll be outside in jeans, long sleeves, all day long because I'm a little bit chilly. I was just in Belize and the temperatures dropped a little bit from Nicaragua and it was really noticeable that I'm like, I kind of wish I had a jacket half the time, right? But people going from the US to Belize are like, it's so hot because they're not used to the temperature because they're used to cold times. All right, so we now have identified that we've cherry picked a location that is not indicative of any major landmass or population in Nicaragua and we cherry picked the time of the year. And then we cherry picked the time of the day and then extrapolated by adding seven degrees to the hottest day probably of the year, it's probably not the hottest day of the year, I'm sure it's hit higher at some point. We did have two weeks ago, we did have some days up here that shot up above what was expected. So they probably did down there too. But this week, 92, 93 is peak. And the hottest times of the year, yeah, if you're going to say what the year is like, 80, 88, maybe at best is the absolute peak you could claim as the peak. But that's not what he said. He said, this is just the temperature as if that's what you're gonna have to live with. If you were here for months, you would never even see a moment where you hit 100 degrees. 
he's acting like you would never be able to escape it, right? And that's that's how people constantly portray it when they're trying to. I, I understand. You come down, you end up warm, you have a bad vacation, you spend a fortune on a place, you made bad decisions, and you're grumpy. And so you want people to be angry with the country, and you're like, I'm going to tell them how hot it is, right? Because you don't think anyone's going to call you out on what the temperatures actually are. And you're going to say, well, in this spot, it's hotter. No, we can look up those spots. We're a very small country. We don't have that much variance, right? So, yeah, you're going to get called out. It's not that hot. Go look. For all my audience, go look at Tola Rivas right now. Go look up the current weather and look at those numbers, right? It's just not that high right now. So, right, to complain that it's 100 while it's like 87 degrees at the time, I think it was actually like 83 degrees at the time that he was posting that it's always 100 uh, on a week when it's never going to hit 100. Now, the one thing he did have was the humidity is on the high side in Tola right now. So, generally here, we're in like the, like right now it's 52% humidity, which is beautiful. Tola is more like 70 right now, which is really high and unusual for Nicaragua. If you're out in like the rainforest, of course you get high humidity, but no one lives there, right? That's not the, the Nicaragua that people know. That's again, like using the U.S. desert areas to indicate what that, oh, you know, the U.S. is only at 5% humidity. What are you talking about? Oh yeah. In places where no one lives. Yeah. There's some spot that's 5% humidity, but that's not what the U.S. experience is like. All right, so what's our takeaway from all of this? A couple things. One, if you hear people being upset about how hot it is in Nicaragua, realize that people are constantly inflating these numbers to try to make it sound bad. They experience something that is warmer than they're used to or warmer than they're prepared for, or they just have a bad time while they're here. And because they're grumpy, they want to make it sound extra hot. It's a really common place to attack the country because it's very hard to really stand up and say, I don't, I don't think it was that hot for you. Right. But in this case, he was saying it was right now and an impossible number. So it was really easy to say that's simply not the case. So that's the first thing. But also be aware that if you're going to come to any country, right, check your times of year. Why would you come to Nicaragua in April if you're not looking for super hot temperatures? That's pretty foolish, it seems like. Now, if you're like just OK with whatever you get and this is when you get a vacation, absolutely come down. We're not saying you shouldn't come, but you should temper your expectations that this is going to be much hotter than what those of us who live here experience. And lots of us who live here talk about, even if we don't do it, maybe going somewhere else for at least a couple weeks in April to get a break. And I didn't do this intentionally, but I went to Belize and got a break and it was way too cold. and I was glad to be back. But <laughs> it's a it's a common thing to be like, you know, this is when San Salvador or Guatemala City or Antigua or Shela Quetzaltenango would be really nice because when we're at our hottest, they're also pretty warm for their own temperatures, but they're so much cooler in general. Could be really nice to get a little break from the heat and that way it would make your April the coolest of the year. If you live here, that's a really reasonable thing to do. I won't say common, but it's, it's not unheard of to use April as your travel month. There's so many places that have either flipped weather or unrelated weather or just cooler temperatures year round that you can go to very easily for a few weeks and get a vacation. And even San Jose, Costa Rica is going to be this nice mild temperatures while we're facing our warmest time of the year here in Nicaragua. So that's that's one thing. So be aware that coming in April means you're going to be experiencing the absolute worst. I always say 11 months of basically the same and one month of, of a little bit warmer. And then be aware that yes, it is hot. Be aware where you are in the country does matter. I warn people all the time and everyone does in the country. If you're in Managua and you say, I'm going to go stay in Leon, everybody says, whoa, you know, it's hot. If you're here in Leon and you're going to go up to Chinandega, everyone says, whoa, you know, it's hot because it gets a little bit warmer. We notice. So if we notice, we know you're going to notice. And so people really do warn you, these are hot areas of the country. Are you really prepared for this? And, and people say, yeah, it's fine. And then they get there and they're like, it's so hot. I don't like it. Well, be aware if you're going to hot part of the countries, it's going to be hot. Use your afternoons. Adjust like in Nicaragua and don't try to live an American lifestyle. When I first came here in 2019, I'm going to tell this story quickly because Alan will get a kick out of this. We came down with someone who absolutely refused to get up early in the morning refused to do anything, just took all their time, and then wanted to go out just like they were in the, the northern half of the U.S. desert areas, like dry areas, and they wanted to do all their stuff in the middle of the afternoon because they came from a place where their, their rhythms were based on uh, cool overall temperatures, and they wanted that warmth of the afternoon because that was when it was really pleasant to go out, and that, so they, that's when their brain was, was wired to do things. That's exactly the opposite of what you want to do here. You're cold-seeking here. And so in the tropics, anywhere in this part of the, the band of the planet. 
And so they would sleep in really late and we'd be up and having breakfast and it's beautiful like this. Like it's absolutely perfect for sitting outside and we're all like, the weather is so awesome. I can't believe how gorgeous it is here. I wanna go walk and I wanna go shop and I wanna go eat and I wanna, you know, walk on the beach and do stuff. We're in San Wendell, sir. And, and then they would get up super late come out and it was already warm. They'd, be, they'd have super high air conditioning during the night, so they were chilly. They'd walk outside and then it was a, it was a big adjustment coming into the warmer afternoon or late morning temperatures. And then they would wanna go out in the mid afternoon and go walking and shopping and do all those things. But we wanted to do it when it was cool. Now it's bright sun, it's directly overhead. Everything is heated up and everyone is wanting to take a nap. This is when you wanna go back to your hotel, relax. This is when you wanna turn on the air conditioning and really enjoy it a little bit. But instead she was, she was like, we're going to do this. And she was also completely dedicated to finding places with air conditioning, which of course don't exist. No one has air conditioning in like restaurants and stores here. So that was not gonna happen. So every single day was this us having to skip when we felt good and wanted to do stuff in good weather. And she was absolutely determined to make it as hot and miserable as possible. And then became so exhausted and overheated that when the evening came and the weather was nice, it was too late and she couldn't take it anymore and she had to go hide in the air conditioning. And so it became a self-fulfilling prophecy of making it as miserable as possible. And that's something that of course, it's up to you how you wanna live your life. But if you're going to be visiting Nicaragua and especially if you're gonna be living in Nicaragua, where you may want to think seriously about how much you're willing to punish yourself because no one's going to suffer but you, well, the people you complain to, I suppose, and my audience, who by proxy I will complain to about your complaining, but you're going to uh, really just punish yourself by making yourself live in temperatures that you don't need to and avoid beautiful, beautiful Nicaragua. And that's part of just life in the tropics. And I lived in Spain and they do the same thing. Even though the temperatures are much more mild, they figured out that the middle of the afternoon is super hot. Why? Why would you subject yourself to that? Have dinner late, have breakfast early, do your work when the, when the world is cool, sleep when it's hot, enjoy life when it should be enjoyed. Nicaraguans are pretty good at this. You will get much more out of Nicaragua, not just because of the weather, but because you will actually interact with people much more like a Nicaraguan. It's a little bit of integration. So do that, get up earlier, enjoy your coffee outside. Okay, Nicaraguans don't do a lot of coffee outside. That's something bring with you from America, trust me, that's, Nicaraguans would be happier if they learned to do more sitting around having coffee early in the morning, but do that, have an early morning coffee, do breakfast outside, enjoy the weather when it's beautiful because Nicaragua has so much beautiful weather to offer you year round. Don't, don't mess it up. Don't make bad decisions about it. Enjoy it, do your shopping. If you want to spend time in the middle of the afternoon, you're just, I can't sleep, I can't rest, I need to do something in the middle of the afternoon. Use that time to go to the mall, use that time to go to a restaurant, use that time to do something to cool down, something that's less energetic, something that takes advantage of the fact that it is warmer. Maybe find an, out, an indoor museum, they do exist, they're very rare, depends where you are. Maybe go in the water, whatever, right? <clears throat> but use that time to cool down and then do your activities in the evenings and the mornings or late at night, going out very late, that's a thing here, right? That's a, there's a reason why people are still out at four o'clock in the morning because they don't wanna be out at four o'clock in the afternoon. So they've just shifted. And I know that coming from other countries, that's often like, I don't understand, why do they stay out so late? But once you're here, the temperature explains a lot of it itself. That's because people like to go dancing. People like live music, like people like to gather in, in places, clubs and stuff, and they don't have lots of air conditioning. And so you can't forcibly shift the, the climatic conditions to make it attractive in the middle of the afternoon, it just isn't going to work. Plus, people have things to do and just there's, there's general life going on. So that's why it's like that. And you can adjust this and you can make it really beautiful for you. So those are your takeaways is make sure you're thinking about time of year. Make sure you're thinking about location. Make sure you're thinking about time of day. Make sure you understand humidity and, and how to read temperatures throughout a day. Like a little bit of this and a little bit of knowledge goes a long way here, right? And, uh, and don't have this expectation that it's going to be cold when you're cold. If you're coming from a cold place, even 84 degrees may hit you really hard and you maybe feeling like it's so unbearable when it's actually incredibly mild, even for where you're coming from, just because it was cold at the time that you came can throw your body off a lot. So definitely because it's the tropics, most people, whether you're coming from Europe or North America, you're generally not familiar with the tropics. You may picture Florida or Texas as being the tropics, but they are not, right? This is a very different climatic zone. And if you're thinking about Hawaii as the tropics, remember that's an island. So there's just an insane amount of wind all the time and it's full of microcosms and it's still pretty warm. But when you're coming to real dense landmass tropics, 
you need to deal with an area that's able to hold a lot of heat, gets an incredible amount of sun, and here in Nicaragua, we're basically at sea level. And those of you who are like, well, I really want to be at the beach, which is really common for foreigners. Nicaraguans are like, whatever, the beach is like a special occasion thing. But when expats and when tourists come here, you tend to be focused on the beach, which is great. We have beautiful beaches. But they're at sea level. That's kind of the nature of beaches, in case you never thought about it. So those beaches are much warmer than the Nicaragua that people live in. So when you're talking about visiting the colonial cities and you're talking about going up to the mountains and you're talking about doing coffee plantations and cigar rolling and chocolate and uh, seeing museums and seeing how Nicaraguans live and getting into the culture, all that, all of that is at a completely different temperature than going for a swim in the ocean and the oceans are always going to be in the hottest spot. So when you're in Rancho Santana, you're not indicative of Nicaragua at all, just like the sand in Florida is not indicative of what the Appalachian Mountains is like, right? But where the people live in Atlanta and, and Orlando have different temperatures than sitting in Miami, for example. Now, all of those are more mild because it's in the US, it's not in the tropics, but you know that different parts, when you get down to sea level, when you get out to the ocean, it's much cooler when you go up into the mountains, or it's much warmer when you go up into the mountains, it's much cooler. You, same thing here. That's why people live at the higher, when they can get there to higher altitudes, or in areas like Managua that just end up being a bit cooler without the, without the altitude specifically, but that's, that's huge factors. Don't ignore them. Think like a Nicaraguan a little bit. Look into these numbers and it'll make your life, your visit, your, your time here, your life here, much more pleasant understanding not just how the temperatures actually are, but how you work with them so you don't end up creating. And because your mindset coming from most places that are colder are how to take advantage of, of what little heat you get. And here it is how to avoid the peaks of heat. And so a lot of things are opposite you will definitely be best served by learning to adapt to the climate you've chosen to be in. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Comes directly to me and helps pay for the cameras and the equipment and the software that's needed to do this show every day. It really does take a lot of work and I really appreciate all of you who make that possible. It means a lot to me. This show is a lot of fun to do and very important to me and to a lot of people. It's a lot of information and a very good resource uh, I, we have found at this point for people who are looking at Nicaragua and wanting to learn about the region. If you would be so kind as to post uh, this link for this episode on some social media, on Reddit, on uh, Facebook, on anything like that, that would be wonderful. Maybe some private group that you're in. Uh, maybe some Facebook groups. Doesn't have to be, you know, big public things. All the LinkedIn, you know, all that really helps. Uh, and of course, like, subscribe, and uh, tell someone about the show, family, friends, or whatever. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And if you would be so kind, we're going to pop up some videos here on the screen. Just click on one. Doesn't matter why. Just, just do it. Let it play. Watch it. Let it play in the background. Just thanks.